You're listening to the Fantastical Electrical Hour from a simpler time when an hour was 20 minutes long. Yo! Hello? Hello? Is this Dr. Beatrice Andrews? What did you just call me? Dr. Beatrice Andrews? Um... I'm calling regarding Jamie Thompson and her employment at our college. What? Oh, yep! Oh, I got you now! Yep, 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 yep! Um, <clears throat> this is she! Uh, hello, Beatrice. I'm Ben from East Coast College. Uh, how do you do? Ah, uh, very well, thanks. So, I have a couple... Oh, that's splendid to hear, Benjamin! Uh, thank you. So... I see Jamie volunteered at the hospital you work at. Can you tell me a bit about her contributions to the hospital? Oh, Jamie was an absolute delight in the hospital. There was this one time I saw her perform uh, open heart surgery on a 93-year-old man who was allergic to to metal and and, and plastic. She had to perform the surgery with, with no tools at all and brought his heart back to life with her bare fingers. Wow. I thought she was just volunteering teaching the children maths. Oh, that too! (laughs) But you know how it is. You know, doctors slack off all the time and the teachers always have to fill in, don't they? Uh Ah, I guess. So, how was Jamie as a leader? Could she hold the attention of a group of students? There was an ambulance crash outside the hospital. One had flipped over onto its back and Maggie single-handedly picked up the ambulance and saved the five dying passengers inside. She did this while teaching 54 students Pythagoras. It was so engaging. Even I learned how to calculate the area of a triangle. Oh, wow. She mentioned she worked just under six months there. For our documentation, are you able to clarify when those six months were? No! What's that, Meredith? I'm getting paged. There's an emergency in Trauma 1. I'm the only cardio specialist in this hospital because Burke left. Oh, sorry, Ben. Looks like I have to dash. It's a beautiful day to save lives, you know. Ta-ta! Welcome to episode one of Mumcast, the only podcast by mums for mums. This week, we'll answer mothering questions from mums all around the country. I'm your host, Geraldine. Introduce yourself, ladies. I'm Pat Bush, the tall one. I'm Catherine, the straight shooter. I'm Zelda, the sober one. So our first question is from Sybil in Sydney. Sybil says, I'm a mum like me. Yes, like you, Pat Bush. Sybil says, how do I stop my daughter from getting anxious about homework? When my little Bobby Bush gets stressed out with his fractions homework, I remind him that it's not the end of the world. It doesn't matter if maths isn't his thing. When he grows up, he can just become a houseboy for a wealthy gay man. That's good! Put things in perspective. Exactly. At the end of the day, there's always wealthy gay men. Thanks, Pat Bush. What about Kat, the straight shooter? Well, my son never struggles with homework. I taught him resilience. When he was younger, I used to sneak into his room while he was asleep and whisper horrible things into his ear. Builds confidence, you know. The criticism seeped into his psyche and slowly the darkness became his friend. I bet he doesn't stress out much. Doesn't do much of anything, eh? What sort of things do you whisper? It's not appropriate for a family podcast. (laughs) Catherine, you are a straight shooter. I grew up on the streets of Joburg. You don't know my story. What about you, Zelda? I don't believe in maths. You're listening to the Fantastical Electrical Hour. Take in the beautiful surrounds of the Magpie Valley with our newest hand sanitizer tour because hygiene is timeless. The popular locations along the valley have had to adapt from making the finest alcohols to premier homegrown hand sanitizers. Starting at $110 for an all-day tour, enjoy award-winning hand sanitizers from seven of the finest distilleries in the region. Starting at the historic craft brewery, Candleford Beers. Here at Candleford, 
We really try to keep the spirit of craft beers in our bottles of hand sanny. This one, for example, this smells like uh, hand-rolled durries and um, yeah, uh, bass players who neg you after their set at that indie music venue you kind of like. Us here at Rolling Hills Winery stock vintages all the way back to the Black Death and our current selections start from a modest $7,000. As a food journalist, aka a professional alcoholic, reviewing hand sanitizers has been different, but I can say that the Magpie Valley has some of the finest drops of the regions. I only bring hand sanitizers from the Magpie Valley to my dinner parties. When we're allowed to go to dinner parties, of course. Let's try this one, shall we? Ah, yes. Silicon based. Mmm, <sighs> yes. I'm getting notes of ethanol. I fucking love sanitizer. Woo! Casey! Casey, when are we going to the next stop? When? The best part is, you can even drive home. Magpie Valley hand sanitizer tours. All of the alcohol, but none of the fun. Hi, I'm Philip. That's right, he is. Welcome aboard this big smelly airways flight 324 to Doha. Now, travelling on an aeroplane is both great and a synonym for great. But it's important you know the safety features of the aircraft. That's right, Stacey. As all planes are literally exactly the same because you can't afford to go on the nice ones, we ask that you pay close attention to the demonstration. The miracle of human flight is amazing. It seems only yesterday we were bashing sticks with rocks and listening to How to Save a Life by the Fray. How far we've come. That's right, Genevieve. Now, if you need to get the attention of a steward, simply turn on the light bulb above your head. It will look like you've had a great idea and a steward will rush quickly over to try and invest. That's right, Peter. Now, if you happen to be sitting in an emergency aisle, tough luck, fuckhead. There may come a time where you're going to have to draw on your zero expertise of emergency situations, open an aeroplane door, which you have never done before, and help other passengers out. Thank God for all that flight school you never went to and engineering knowledge you don't have. Don't worry, though. In exchange for succumbing to the flames while you help other people you don't know to safety, you get a whole six nanometers more leg room. It's like a chaise lounge in the sky. Now here's a bonus fact. Ever wonder how aeroplanes fly? People claim it's something to do with air underneath the plane or something, but that's just silly. I mean, there's air under my mum's Hyundai i20, and does that fly? No siree. The truth is, nobody actually knows how an aeroplane flies. It just seems to work so far, and we're just hoping it continues. Fingers crossed. That's correct, Craig. Right, brothers. <laughs> More like lucky guess, brothers. Now, if you have a crying baby on board, there is literally nothing you can do. But you might as well earn the respect of those around you by beating your baby in an argument of wits. Have no fear. A microscopic baby has got no chance against you, an adult human. Once you've dominated your baby in a battle of brains, lighten the mood that your cool joy baby has ruined by hand passing it to other passengers. This has the dual benefit of letting the other passengers see that you don't like the baby either and you're all on the same side. Plus, it shows that you like sports and sports are cool. It's fucked how correct you are, Gary. Well, that's all from us here at Big Smelly Airways. I've been Reginald, and I'd like to say thank you for flying with us. I've been Harriet, and I'd like to say the emergency brace position is completely redundant and is simply used to stop you panicking as you fall helplessly from the sky like an asphyxiated on fire little bird. And from all of us here at Big Smelly Airways, we'd like to say... Cabin crew hourly rates add up to less than $5 above minimum wage. Plus, at the end of your shift, we're in another fucking continent to where we started. Fuck my life. Bye. Oh, God, that cold's us. Oh, man. I mean, no, Welcome to Dadcast, the only podcast by dads and for dads where we talk about dad things. My name's Gary. Introduce yourselves, dads. Uh, I'm Barry. And I'm Harry. Tonight, we're talking about the unspoken bond between father and son. Barry, care to start us off? Uh, today, my son beat me in table tennis for the first time. <sighs> Big moment. How old is he? Uh, Jack is 13. He just pipped me in a tiebreaker. <laughs> oh, been there, mate. Yeah. And when he won, he was so happy, he ran around the block singing, Come on, Aussie, come on. Old Mr. Demetrius came out to see what the ruckus was, and, and when he saw Jack shouting, he cheered for him too. 
He called out, Hey, Barry, uh, you kid beat you. What gives? <laughs> Jack had just started singing Waltzing Matilda. I just had to smile. It brought me back to when I first beat my own dad at pool. I didn't believe I'd really done it. I thought he'd let me win. I couldn't understand how I was better than dad at anything. He was a superman to me. But here was my boy Jack beating me in a game of table tennis and whooping it up without a second thought. I felt not sad, exactly, but um, a melancholic, a sense of something lost. But I, I didn't know what. Was it his lost innocence? My lost authority? Maybe Jack doesn't respect me as much as I respected my father. Did we lose something somewhere? But uh, then I thought about how distant my own father had been. He was a hard man, my father. Oh, he loved me, but, but he, in his own way. So maybe it's a good thing. I, I don't know, maybe Jack doesn't look at me like a superhero because he sees me as a, a human being. Fallible, you know? I, I don't know, maybe that's a good thing. There's good and bad. I don't know. Things change so much. I'm proud of him, though. I'm proud of him. Thanks, Barry. What about you, Harry? Oh, yeah! Kind of similar to that, actually. Oh, I climbed the stairs if you want, but don't talk to my mother. Oh, my God. <laughs>